Would you like some really useful free computer apps? If so, stick around. This Mac is a Mac that I made a video about earlier. It has a 2.3 gigahertz quad core i7, 8 gigs of RAM. You basically, I made a video about it. You can check it up, up here. And it is only running Mac OS Big Sur, which if you, those who don't know, was Mac OS that was put out somewhere around the middle of 2020. Well, the first thing I wanna show you guys is basically the app that I use, that most people use on a daily basis on pretty much every computer they have, and it's Chrome. Now I know Chrome gets some bad lash because it's a RAM hog, it, doesn't have the greatest security, but there are a couple main reasons I use it. Um, one reason includes optimization for uploading these videos. If I go onto YouTube, it usually has the best upload times because it takes time to process and upload different videos. Now, another reason I use it is because of the immense selection of Chrome extensions. Like, these are all the ones I have. I don't. I have one for. I bought for YouTube that doesn't actually work, so I'm removing that. Anyway, I have that. I have Pixel Rebound, which is a dumb game. Chrome Remote Desktop, which I'll get more into later. Return YouTube Dislike, which actually, if you go to a YouTube page, it will actually show you. Like if I go to, wow, um, my YouTube page is weird to probably blur that. Um, it'll actually like show you how many likes and dislikes the video has. So for instance, I actually choose just someone else's. This is a Luke Miani video, full disclosure but it'll actually show me how many dislikes it has, even though without that enabled, YouTube got rid of that feature a while ago, and it was kind of controversial. But now I've got that back, and then I have vidIQ for YouTube, which if you are a creator, is actually really cool. Even though the premium features are much better, it gives you like your views. I had a really, really good video a while ago, so that's why it's saying um, it's there down. Monetization tracker for me, because I'm at 14 subs and 15 public watch hours. Let's see if we can boost that. And then it shows like what's doing really well. Hopefully this video will be on there and doing amazing. So I just think it looks really neat. Like Chrome, it's laid out really well. You can like change a lot of things. I personally, I don't know why it's wrong. I personally don't really love the shortcuts on the main page, but I have it cycling through geometric shape backgrounds. And then I don't know, I don't even know what cards are, so I'm doing those off. And then I have it on like a dark theme because I'm dark mode all day kind of person. And I have like Chrome apps, vidIQ, Google Meet, from my desktop, which again I'll get to later. Apple Newsroom, which they recently like there's something weird going on with it. And it loads. And they do December 13th, then skip to December 20th, then skip to January 5th, then skip to January 10th, January 10th, and then January 11th. And today I'm filming this on the 14th. So the day before this will hopefully go out. Then I have my YouTube things, and this just has some really cool things I use in videos. Schoology, which is since I'm a student, that's how you track that stuff. I would show you what that looks like, but that's gonna display my name, my teacher's name, so I'm not gonna do that. Amazon, because literally everyone and times uses Amazon. That's not it. And then I fix it, which is basically where I get like repair manuals and stuff like that. Thingiverse, which is where I get different things to print and different other things that I find useful. My utilities, where I have a compressor for YouTube, Cloud Convert for YouTube, Tech Stock for YouTube, and Check iCloud, because if I'm buying something off eBay, I want to make sure it doesn't have an iCloud lock so I don't get scammed. Research, I have Mac Gamer, Mac Rumors, and Apple Insider. And then repair, I, I fix the parts, I fix the tools, and then eBay, where I buy the things to repair. So that's basically my whole Chrome setup. I do really like the home button. I find that really useful because I'm one of the people also who just like it to need. I'm not the kind of person who has like 50 Chrome tabs open. Not that my computer can handle it. The fans literally just turned on when I opened three Chrome tabs. Oh my god. I have a couple other things running in the background, like this screen recording. But it's really useful. Um, some apps up here, my account. Um, but yeah. I do think Chrome is a big 
hog when it comes to data, and I used to use Safari, but I didn't really love how it's laid out. I don't think that looks particularly nice, and just I don't think it looks very good. And I thought if I'm going to use Google Search, I might as well use all Google things. All right, so this portion's getting a little big with that because my fans are starting up, and then with the app. All right, and then the next thing I want to talk about is how I edit. So as most of you probably know, I use iMovie. Usually because it's, it's nice, it's free, and it takes a while to load. And it's a decent editor for beginners. Now, I have been trying out CapCut because one thing you can't do is change the aspect ratio, which I really don't like. And But the only problem with CapCut is you can't full screen the video. Like for you, those of you who don't know macOS, clicking this green button will usually full screen the app. But um, in CapCut, there isn't a green button. There's the minimize button and the to close the app button, which is kind of annoying. I'm going to actually quit that because that's taking the data. And then that iMovie is just, it's also, it exports in 4K. I did actually try using the, the free version of DaVinci Resolve 18. So it has a couple more features, but it's very powerful and it's very hoggy of like RAM and data and everything. So I ended up going back to this. Now, I probably will end up getting DaVinci Resolve on my new computer when I buy that, because it is definitely a better editor. It gives you more choice, more, basically everything. So I will end up doing that when I get a new computer. But for now, iMovie's doing okay. And I actually have another thing that I want to show you guys, and it's actually really useful. So this is Google Keep. A lot of people probably know it's like Google's Notes app. And these are honestly the two main Google extension stuff I use a lot, other than also Chrome Road Desktop, which is tied into Chrome. If it loads, okay. This is the script for this video, or these, I have like little bullet points. But anyway, I have a bunch of different ideas and stuff down here. Don't see my ideas. And um, I can like group them, so I have some ideas in here. Um, some active videos that, I'm trying, that are actually on YouTube. And then like things I can repair that I found. So if I'm looking at XPS 13, 9370, a broken Pixel 6, and a MacBook Air 2011. And I don't know where the links went, so I might not be able to repair those. And then I don't even know what this is. So I'm going to get rid of that. And then these are all the labels that I have because they're really useful just to have up so I can sort through things. So I really do like Keep. It works across my phone, syncs through my Google account, and it has dark mode, which is amazing. Dark mode is the best. Alright, and then the next thing I want to talk about is basically how I get these web sites on my computer. Because you might know, there's no Google Keep app. There isn't, sadly. There's no real big YouTube app. One thing that's really useful that I do really like is this little app called Web Catalog. You download it online, and I'll have everything linked in the description so you can download these things. Or a DMG, or I think it works on Windows too. But you can basically take an app and throw it into a window. Actually, I'm just gonna install it. I was playing around with it. But I have like a timer for when I'm like watching YouTube or something. And I don't make sure I'm not watching for 30 hours. I don't know why it's 32 minutes, that's weird. Um, and then I have Netflix and then a bunch of other things. So basically these all perform like apps. So you can window them like a normal app. You can do pretty much everything. Although Mac OS's windowing system sucks. But like I have my server, Google Drive, Google Keep. Sorry the fans going in the background, it's really annoying. But basically the Tinkercad, I can like load up Tinkercad to uh, 3D model things. I can load up this, my server for my 3D printer so I'm going to send things over and drive for like saving all the things for school and stuff. Another thing I want to mention that I've actually already mentioned is Chrome Remote Desktop. Basically what this does is it lets me access other computers. So I have access to my computer, I already have things, I don't know why it's not signed in, so I'll figure that out, but it works really pretty solidly and it allows me to like control it from my phone if I'm like downloading something on my computer and I know it's going to take a while I can just 
put my computer on its charger in another room, walk away, and check its status from my phone. Because it actually updates live, and it's really cool. I'm actually going to put this, because I don't want this to be... I'm going to put that so this... And then, actually, the YouTube app... Side really. Um, the YouTube app for... Um, it, it, I was watching the Luke Miani video. Shout out to him. His videos are so good. Like, they're really amazing. This is my YouTube page. Subscribe to, like, my friend. Almost everything Apple. Let's try and get him to, like, 100 subscribers by the end of the year, maybe. Uh, Luke Miani, who has subscribers. Marquez Brown, who pretty much everyone watches. Mr. the Boss, who pretty much everyone watches. Scott Ujan, who not a ton of people watch, but he has a bunch of really cool 3D printer videos. Um, this is like the only non-tech channel I subscribe to, Shiloh and Pose. It's a bunch of like, it's like if Nerf fights had zombies or Pokemon in real life. It's just sometimes, sometimes interesting. And then Tom the Tech Chat, because that's usually interesting too. And so that's my YouTube app, that's what I have on YouTube. I don't have a ton of, I don't subscribe to a ton of people, but I hope you'll find my videos good enough to subscribe to, because that would mean a ton to me. It'd be amazing. So, another thing I want to talk about is some of the utilities and that sort of things that I have on my computer. I have some really cool things that you notice, this is not a stock menu bar. I play with this a lot. Basically, this allows me to pop out everything. So the first thing we have is this. It's a flash, like shows you, gives you different wallpapers. It's really, really nice. Um, so I can set like a new wallpaper stand. Searching through and I think, oh wow, uh, this wallpaper looks sick. It'll just equip it on my home screen. I'm actually not a huge fan of that, so I'm gonna find another one. But I kind of like my old one. And you can actually set it to update it daily, although I don't do that because sometimes I'll choose wallpapers that I don't like. Okay, that looks sick. Anyway, that's really useful. This, actually, the way I'm hiding it is an app called Hidden Bar or something like that. And what this does is it actually allows you to hide them when you don't need them. This is keyboard preferences. I don't even know why I have this on my menu bar because I never use it. But then this is the Holy Grail. This shows me how much of my CPU intensive I'm doing. So I'm 8.3% screen recording and moving my cursor around. And then how much RAM I'm taking up, because that's useful, because it only has 8 gigs, and Chrome loves to take up that RAM. And then how much storage space I have left. Currently, I have 14.87 gigabytes left. So that's really useful. It's this little app called Usage. You can actually pull it out even more. And I have my network, which I need to blur. Um, and my like Mac OS, the disk, the processor load, battery, I'm at 100%. I'm plugged in, because the battery is not great. Wait, what? It says I'm at 6,930 million powers out of 7,023 million powers, but it is 100%. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know. And then the last one is this one called Max Fan Control. So what I usually do is when I'm uh, when I'm editing something, I will sometimes put my fans on a full blast. You can hear what that sounds like now. It's my phone that's recording the audio from this is right next to it. So listen. just allows me to export faster and I'm actually going to make that much wider set of automatic but I can control it and it's really cool I can see my temperatures apparently my my CPU core one is at about 170 degrees which isn't that hot the SSD is at 120 I didn't realize things because it's, it's automatically set to Celsius but I'm in America and for some reason we use Fahrenheit which doesn't make any much more sense i just know it better but those are like the utilities i have on my mac i have a little box in here with all of them in it and then iMazing is pretty cool because i can like plug in my plug in phones and stuff run some things on them but it's pretty it's basically the three u tools of mac and i really hope three u tools comes to mac but iMazing is the best thing i found as an alternative for mac os then another really cool thing i have set up is paste so if I go into Chrome or something, and I click Option Z, it shows me everything I've copied, ever. I can delete it, obviously, but it's really useful for if I copy multiple things and I want to just put them in and make videos and stuff, and I can actually add separate things. I highly recommend iMazing if you want a really cool clipboard manager. And 
And then another thing that I use a lot, and I actually used it for my, most previous, my previous long video, is keynote, pages, and numbers. So I, again, got have an older version of keynote that's like a year old because it is, um, the most recent does not support um, Mac OS Big Sur, which is kind of a bummer because that's I can't up your past it, otherwise I would have. But when I get a new computer, I'll be on Ventura, so that'll be nice. Anyway, so this uh, it's just a really good presentation editor. I think the transitions are sick. Like you saw the transition in my previous video, that was all baked into this. Like I thought the graphics looked pretty cool. That was also all baked into Keynote. Close that because the fans starting up again. And then pages is like. No, is kind of like writing documents. So if I open a new document, I can create one. Give me a sec. And this is a new document. I can't type. This us a new document? This us a new document. Anyway, so this is just a little, like, really useful for... Delete that, I don't need that. But it's really useful for if I want to, like, write a document or something. And then numbers, which is, as you probably guessed from this, is like statistics and spreadsheets. I'm not a huge spreadsheet person, I don't have much. And my school does use Google um, spreadsheets and stuff because Google sharing is just better. Like sharing these throughout devices for the iWork suite at like school and stuff does not work well. We have to do the Google suite so I don't have like all of my school stuff on here, but when I do want to make something myself, I will use um, the Apple iWork suite because it works pretty well. As you can probably tell by now, I'm a pretty big fan of like integrated things that you don't have to do a ton with and like Apple things because they're very like very not very likely to be hacked and I think they're very secure and I also think they look pretty good. Only thing, only exception is like Chrome and keep Google Keep because I just don't like the other ones. And then another thing I use, I already showed you with IQ, is the way I actually do my uh, 3D printing. I, I don't know, like, Kira's in my, my, my dock. Anyway, so I use Kira because I'm a pretty big noob. I've literally had to have my friend come over and help me figure out what's wrong with my 3D printer. Um, I'll have a link up there if you want to watch the, my um, impressions on that after this video. But it's, it's basic, um, I don't know much, I am still trying to figure out a couple issues, um, so I will hopefully get a video out on that soon, but scroll down to smack that subscribe button if you want to see that, because hopefully that I'll get some really cool stuff out. And then, I guess another thing I can show you is some of my files and Finder and stuff that I have. These are literally my only my applications, because I don't download a ton, it only has 128 gigs of storage, which is kind of annoying, and I'm gonna end up buying a terabyte MacBook soon, so hopefully I can get a ton of videos on that. There's like a bunch of things in here, my dogs, um, downloads for stuff for this video that I filmed earlier. And then like stuff, I call it movies, I don't know why, I probably should call it videos. They're like working on, stuff I'm working on, I don't even know where that skirt came from. Um, CapCut Draft, which I just have in here. Channel Custom, which is like where I can edit all these things on the computer. Oh wait, I never told you how I video edit photos. Um, so I used to use this app called Photo Director 365, but it's not amazing. So what I honestly usually do is I have this sketchbook. Sketchbook Pro is an app you can download for like 20 bucks on pretty on both operating systems. But I found a way to get a less specced out version for free online, and I will leave that link in the description because that's been really nice. I can like draw things, like I can draw some reason my brush drive is massive, but I can like, that is not high. Anyway, I can draw that, and then I th usually throw it in the photos and give it some quick color correction. But it's a really useful uh, little thing to have around. And then effects, some effects I have that I'll probably have a lot more after this video because I want to try and level up my production because honestly, I find the videos kind of boring, but I hope you guys don't. Um, my intro and outro that don't match at all, um, some print codes, and that's all the little things I have. Um, working on scripts, I've got in here. And then I also actually have a boot camp. So I'm actually gonna show you what I have on the Windows partition now. So, okay, so this is me booted in Windows. Um, I installed a video recorder 
that I have used in the past and doesn't seem to hack you, so I guess I'll link this down in the description. It, um, I think you shouldn't really need to use it if you're on a Mac. You can just click Command Shift 5 and QuickTime will do it for you, but on Windows, I found this is probably the best way to do it. So I have Cura on here, which I don't even know why I have that. I think I'm in. I don't even know why I have that installed, because that's probably just taking storage. Same for iTunes. But, another, but one thing I do have installed that I like, that for some reason does not like me, is 3U Tools. You basically connect like any device, and it will tell you if things are genuine, what has been swapped, and it's actually pretty really useful when I get new things. So that's really nice. I'm actually going to try plugging in my AirPods and see what comes up. So I just plugged in my AirPods, and it says connecting iDevice, which I assume means Apple device. Connecting. Later. I don't feel like doing that right now. And then do a set. I think maybe I have to open the case, I don't know. Um, but it will actually, like, show me different things. Like, actually, I'm going to try connecting my phone, see what happens then. Connecting my phone, click trust. And it loaded in. Um, I hope it doesn't say my my name. It says my name, so I'll blur that out. It says it twice. Oh, seriously? Anyway, but it shows me like Apple, Apple ID lock on. We get my iPads in. Um, what is the PC charging? Is it charging? I don't know. But it actually can tell like it's an iPhone 14 Pro 256 space black, which is true. It has 17 charge cycles because it's only been made for a while. And you can like transfer data, make ringtones, apps. Oh, you can like, oh, you can update some apps. And of course, what the apps you Update. Oh, never mind. Okay, and then anyway, it just has some things like back in your store, virtual. Like, it's really useful, and I actually find it, and a lot of people find it to be very nice. So now I'm going to actually eject that. Anyway, but that is a really useful app for anyone who likes technology. And then this is a very cool app that I will open in a sec once I figure something out. Okay, so I've just made it so my name doesn't pop up in there so I don't have to blur things more than I have to. Anyway, but this is a game that my dad actually played that is only Windows, which is kind of upsetting because I'm a more of a fan of Mac OS. But I, it loads in, it's, this has got a little patch on it, but I can like go into, Mac is better, I don't know, in my dog's name, and then here I'm 921, and then I can play like games, so say I want to make a game, just a random game, um, just to show you guys, it basically, you have like this thing called a recycler, and you have to deploy it when you're trying to like win the game, basically, you're trying to beat the other team, it's a really fun game, um, it does cost money, but my dad already bought it when he was like, Roger that, my age, so it isn't way. much, but like you go around and you know, have to, to get scrap, which is basically money, but I'm actually going to leave the game, and you can actually save it, which is nice, because then I can save it, and then, yeah, that is actually all I have on my Windows partition, I hit Chrome, but literally Chrome is so much better than Edge, that it's not at all, like, anything really to have Chrome, literally no one uses Edge. Except for like people who don't have access to Chrome, which I don't even know who that is, so I don't know why I said that. But I'm actually gonna be back into Mac OS. But thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, scroll down, smack the subscribe button. It would mean a ton to me. Thank you, thank you so much. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.